Welcome to another episode of Inspirational Chats where we interact with young leaders who have made an impact in the life of others, telling us how they began their journey, how they've come, and how far they want to go. I have a very special guest with me, but before that, let's go for a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. It started um, from a Suboy nursery, then I enrolled at a Suboy early primary. Um, just as I entered GSS 1, my parents sent me to Suhu to go and continue my education. So I left a Suboy when I was in GSS 1, second term. Then I went to Suhu early to continue my um, basic education. Then from there, I enrolled at St. Peter's Senior High School at Kwaun Kwetia. Um, I was there for two years and then I ended at um, Amasaman Senior High School. Um, from there, um, I went to the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology to, to learn um, chemical engineering. And then um, after my service at Gasseb and later as a teacher, I, I came to GBC to work as a journalist. Um, when I enrolled at GBC as a journalist, I needed to also help myself by acquiring a certificate in journalism. So I did a diploma in journalism. And then also I enrolled at the Ghana Institute of Journalism and I, I did a course in phonetics because I, I realized that at some point you need to pronounce words professionally. So mm -hmm. I dedicated a lot of time and months and weeks to phonetics and English. So I enrolled at GIG particularly for, for, for that. I have, I have had other um, you know, certificates. I have a certificate in marketing. Um, I have a certificate in public relations. But um, all this is because when I entered into football administration, I realized marketing would be important. Public relations would be very, very important as well. And um, that is what motivated me to um, you know, uh, go after all these courses. Um, have you managed a team before? Yes, um, in 2007 I got the chance to work for, for Tema Youth as communications director. I went through the ranks and later became the deputy CEO of Tema Youth. I worked for Tema Youth for close to 10 years. I, I think I, I, I resigned from Tema Youth in 2012. I joined in 2007 and I resigned in 2012. Um, then in 2014, I joined Dreams FC as communications leader, and I've been working at Dreams FC since 2014. Um, what is the most enjoyable part of sports journalism, um, journalism career? Most enjoyable most part. Most enjoyable part. Well, to be very honest, when, when you do well, if you go about your duties well. But before that, uh, how many? Um, 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 clubs have you managed so far? Three. Three? Yeah. Okay. Um, back to the question. Um, the most enjoyable part of, of my job is when you walk out there, people notice you are the one going and they call you to offer you advice, to make you know, gestures, um, to, um, you know, sometimes they, there are those who go out of their way to give you money. Um, sometimes you enter into an office, you are in need of help, and people are willing to give you that help, to offer you that help. Um, I remember the first time I, I, I was applying for a UK visa to, to travel to the UK in 2006. I, I got to the embassy, there was a long queue, you know, but I had, I had appeared on TV a couple of times. Um, they called me, and then they took my documents and my staff of GBC. I didn't go through the normal procedure. I applied my, for my visa on Friday. I was asked to pick up the visa on Monday. These are some of the things that make the job um, exciting. Uh, um, but, but it doesn't come on a silver platter. You have to work hard. You have to dig deep. You don't have to give up. You don't have to look back. You just have to encourage and motivate yourself to, to get to the, to the, to the highest level. So on um, September 2019, you were appointed as the ESPN Fox Wafu com uh, communicator. How did, how did it happen? 
Okay, so I I enjoy doing commentary. Um, one of the things that I picked up from Kabraye is commentary. Um, I have been to commentary courses at GIJ with the BBC and so I've always been aspiring to get the chance to hone my talent at the international front. So one morning I woke up and I received a call from one Kyle. He introduced himself as the head of ESPN Africa and said he has received recommendation from the Confederation of African Football, CAF, uh, to contact me and that I have been recommended to, to them. So they requested for my CV, which I forwarded. Then I think two weeks later, they came back and sent an email asking for my works. So I also um, forwarded my works to them. And they wanted three of my recent work that I have done in commentary. So I forwarded to them. Um, praying that things would go well. Then one Tuesday afternoon, I was at the office, um, you know, preparing for the midday news when I received an email that the board of ESPN and the management of ESPN um, Africa and Europe have settled on me as one of the commentators for the 2019 Wafu Cup of Nations in Senegal. Look, I was overjoyed. I was absolutely um, on top of the moon because then I said to myself that at long last my dream has finally come through so um, there was a dialogue a lot of dialogue they sent me my contract I went through I discussed with my legal team and um, finally I responded that indeed I am ready to pick up their offer they also um, replied by saying yes once I have accepted their offer then I should get ready for for the tournament so we exchanged a lot of emails, a lot of correspondence, and finally I received my ticket, traveled to Senegal on the 27th of September. Um, the tournament was starting on the 28th, and so on the 28th, I was just praying to go out there and do a good job. And so they gave a, they gave a list. Um, I was going to do the second game of the day. Once I got that, I said, this is the time for me to announce myself to the rest of the world. So it just happened. I went into the commentary booth. I did my job diligently. And um, we moved from there. I, we went on and on and on until the, the final game when Ghana played against Senegal on the 13th of October. And uh, now, let's come to um, Ghana football. Uh, does Ghana football have a future? How, how do you see the uh, uh, Ghana Football Association? How do, how do you see it? Well, you can never say that football in Ghana does not have a future. Football in Ghana has a bright future. Football in Ghana has always had a bright future. Now, the moment, the, moment, the problem we have now is the fact that we didn't prepare for today. We didn't put in enough effort to get the game at, at, at the highest level. Now, the job that started in 97, 98, and 99 up until 2004, we reaped the benefits in 2006, 2007, 2008, until 2014. Now, there is an end to every era. Now, so everything we started in 2007 until 2004, we reaped the benefits. We qualified for the World Cup in Germany 2006, qualified for the World Cup in South Africa 2010, qualified for the World Cup in Brazil 2014. There should have been a plan for us to start again and build another team that will take over from the SN, Stephen Apia, Sulu Muntari, Kevin Prince, Boateng, and Samojan era. Unfortunately, not much went into it. So that is the reason why today there is no Apia, there is no Jan, there is no SN, there is no Muntari, and we have, and the game has taken a those dive. It's because we did not prepare, we did not put in enough measures to still keep that consistency. So what we have to do now is to start afresh is to start developing new talent, is to start scouting new players, is to start uh, nurturing new talent, and then keep them there. Make sure you get them into good clubs, and make sure you monitor their progress, and make sure you also help them to keep that consistency. And once we are able to do that, we will become a force again. We have always been a force, but now it looks like things have, have, have dropped a bit, and it's about time we start working on lifting the bar. Okay. Um 
So let me ask you this. Um, the, the workout, what, were you impressed about Ghana's performance during the, um, the workout? I, I really don't know which of the World Cups we are talking about, but I think we were good in 2006. Um, we were brilliant in 2010. We were just a step away from making history by becoming the first African team to qualify for the semi-finals. Unfortunately, you would have expected progress because you made progress from 2006 to 2010, and then you would have expected that the team would do well in 2014. Unfortunately, unfortunately, due to certain circumstances, due to certain reasons, we did not do well in Brazil. We didn't qualify for Russia 2018. I pray we qualify for Qatar 2022. Go there and excel. And indeed, announce to the world that we went, I mean, we took two steps backwards, but we are back again and we are back for good. But the only way you can do that is to plan well, is to think well, is to strategize well, is to position yourself well, is to work hard, and then you will be able to get to the top again. What about the current one, the Egypt one? The Cup of Nations yeah, in yeah, Egypt? Yeah, I, 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 Cup of Nations. I think it didn't go well. It I think well. you look at our performance since 2004 when we failed to qualify for the competition, we've always been in the semi final. So um, once you couldn't qualify for the semi final, you know that definitely um, your performance was not good enough. We exited at the quarterfinal against Tunisia on penalties, and I think it wasn't it wasn't the best. Okay, now we have you, GFP. Um, what, 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 what are your views on on the new GFP? I think um, the 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 need all of us on board. Mm. Um, the. 11 people who are on the executive council and then the president making it 12 who not cannot solve our problems without our, our help without coming together without you know putting our shoulders to the world that's the only way we can help them to succeed now um, Keto Kweku as an individual has done tremendously well for himself product of University of Ghana product of uh, University of Liverpool he has been able to build his own club, Dreams FC, and he has brought the club to an enviable position. When he was given the opportunity to land the MTN FA Cup, he put in his best, and he did very, very well by getting it to a good level. Now, on the executive council, you have a lot of individuals who have contributed a lot to the development of football in the previous administration. Um, we don't need their, their, their individual skills. We need them together. But before they can succeed, they also need all of us to push them, to support them. On paper, the new GFA looks solid, brilliant. But they cannot succeed without us. They cannot succeed if they don't get the backing of the government. They cannot succeed if they don't get the backing of corporate Ghana. They cannot succeed if they don't get the backing of you and I, and me as a broadcaster, as a sports journalist, to talk about the game every day. I need to position myself in such a way that I will be able to speak the truth every day, tell the public the truth, make the truth available to the public, make information accessible to the public. Then they must also take the right decision because sometimes the decision you take can either hurt or do you good. You take good decision, you succeed. You take poor decision, you fail. So yes, we have entrusted our game into their hands for the next four years but they cannot succeed without us. I think they can do a decent job with the backing of the people. Are you a member of the team? No. You're not a member? No. Um, when coaching a team, what comes first, talent or attitude? Well, talent comes first. Talent comes first. Attitude follows. Okay. Because I doubt if you, you, you use attitude to judge a player without talent, if you can get the best out of the player because the player goes onto the pitch to exhibit the talent then out of the talent you'll be able to know the attitude of the player sometimes a player's attitude can be poor but it takes a coach to make it best or to make the best out of the situation so i think talent always comes first but attitude will take you far okay um your my final word advice to the government well, advice to the government, 
they have to invest in the game. Um, training but first of all, I've been seeing this hashtag, uh, bring back footballer also. I bring back the love. Yeah. yeah. How did it happen? Um, I think the, you, you and I know that because the Black Stars have not been performing in recent times, Ghanaians have lost love in the team or for the team. Um, even our local league, when we go to Africa, we don't perform, we don't do well. Mm -hmm. Most of our national teams have failed um, poorly. And so Ghanaians have, it looks like Ghanaians no longer follow the teams or Ghana football with that passion, with that love. And so the new administration of the FA thought it wise to start that campaign just to appeal to Ghanaians to bring back the love. Because without the love, there is no football. Without football, you cannot also have that social product to enjoy on your TV. Now, football is the only sport in the world that is consumed, uh, you know, throughout the world in over 200 and 203 countries in the world. Every country plays football. Every nation plays premium on football. So that is why the president of the FA brought that, uh, you know, that hashtag, bring back the love hashtag. And I think it's going well. If we are able to do things right, Ghanaians will come back and love their team. It is not as if Ghanaians have abandoned their team, but it's because results have not been good in recent years. So um, advice to government, government need to invest in the game. Look, I did a research directly. Club owners in Ghana have employed close to five to 6,000 Ghanaians. From Coles to Division 3 to Division 2 to Division 1 to the Premier League. Administration, technical, close to 6,000 Ghanaians have been absorbed by football. What that tells you is that, but for maybe Togbe Afede, who is financing House of Folk, but for Moses Ama, who is financing Mediama, but for Keto Krak, who is financing Dreams FC, all these people would have been working on the streets, jobless. So the government must make sure that there is an enabling environment for these people to enjoy what they do. Create an enabling environment. Invest in the game. Improve training pitches. Improve pitches. Improve the national stadia. Invest in the game. Also, I mean, I mean, find a way to support them halfway. Because if the owner of Dreams FC has employed 120 people, that he pays every month. It is not different from an international company like Coca-Cola, who have employed Ghanaians and they pay them at the end of the, of the month. It's not different from an international company like, say, Pepsi, or any of the other multinational companies. I think that it's about coming together to build a strong nation. If you check the remittances that come into this country from footballers, foreign-based players, the remittances they send to their family, to their girlfriends, to their parents, to their whatever, loved ones, you have no idea. Go to Temaport and check how much footballers pay at the ports when they import cars into this country. Go and check the investment of a Samojan and the number of people he has employed. Derek Boateng, he has built a hotel around Achimota area. He has employed about 70 people. What would have been the, the, the fate of those 70 people who are working for Derek Boateng? But for the fact that a footballer went beyond the borders of Ghana, made money, and came to invest in the, econ in the economy. So my advice to government is that they should always find a way to bridge the gap and to invest in the game. Um, your favorite player, Ghana? My favorite player? My favorite player? In Ghana, yeah. In Ghana, I, I think my favorite players um, are no longer active. Oh. Abedi Pele has always been my player. Uh, and then, again, I love Sulu Mutai. I love him to everyone. What about uh, coach? Favorite, favorite coach? coach? Sese Sese Jones of Tukwifi. The lady. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much, Mr. Henry. Um, uh, let me ask you this. So if someone wants to be a sports journalist, um, your advice for the young ones who want to come into sports? Go after your dreams. Don't allow anybody to intimidate you. Be fearless and make sure you acquire the needed skill, expertise, and education. Go first in search of the certificate. I mean, it could be either way. You can learn on the job, come into the field like some of us did. But I will always advise up-and-coming journalists to first of all go after the certificate 
and then chase after your dream. Don't allow anybody to intimidate you. Don't allow anybody to bring you down. Don't allow anybody to discourage you. Be fearless and chase after your dream. I am a shining example. When I started, I was nobody. When I started, there were about six, seven people in the queue. Every day when I go to the office, there were people who would try and discourage you and bring you down and give you negative energy, even when you are doing well. But just be focused and fight for your um, uh, heart desires.